Growing $1,000 portfolio is about three things. Finding a strategy that puts the odds in your favor, being efficient with the limited capital that you have, and understanding how much risk that you wanna take on. The last one, risk, was really important to me. So for this video, we'll start with some strategies that are less risky, and by the end of this video, we'll get into strategies that have a higher risk to reward ratio. Trading options, especially with small accounts, can be a little bit tricky, um, especially with undefined risk positions because they require this thing called buying power reduction, which is like kind of like escrow. It's kind of like this capital that you have to put on hold throughout the duration of the trade um, in case, you know, the losses get very large. And so the broker doesn't have to cover it. So, um, but there are ways that you can trade options with smaller accounts. You just kind of have to be a little bit more strategic about how you set those trades up. For beginner traders uh, with smaller accounts, I think it's really important to just keep the risk in check. Okay. So with $1,000, um, you can trade spreads from an options trading standpoint. You can trade mm -hmm. debit spreads, credit spreads. If I were to categorize the two though, I think a more conservative strategy would be using credit spreads because credit spreads where you're selling a spread and you're giving, your spells, uh, giving yourself a lot of space to uh, be right with out of the money credit spreads. Okay. Uh, it's really just a higher probability trade than the counterpart, which would be a debit spread. Uh, but yeah, credit spreads that are really narrow, I think are a good tool for learning, a uh, good tool for new traders in smaller accounts where they know what their risk is up front, their risk isn't going to change, and uh, you can still deploy a high probability trade with them. If I wanted to trade an ETF, that might be a little bit more conservative. You can trade market ETFs like SPY or, or QQQ or IWM. You can trade sector ETFs, um, commodity ETFs, uh, any of those ETFs, because those are baskets of, of instruments. They are a little bit more diversified than trading Amazon, which has more idiosyncratic risk factors. That's what we call it. So these are like single company or single market risk factors. So with a more aggressive uh standpoint in terms of strategy, mm -hmm. I think I might consider flipping to debit spreads. Okay. So with credit spreads, when you're selling spreads out of the money, you're basically picking where you don't think a stock will go. Mm -hmm. You're betting against the movement of a stock in that direction. With a debit spread, you're actually betting that the stock will move in a particular direction. And with debit spreads, you can manipulate your risk reward a lot more. So with a credit spread, it's really what is the premium that I can collect? And that is my max profit. So with debit spreads, you have a lot more ability to change your risk profile, specifically to get a higher max profit uh, relative to credit spreads. So I think conservative would be credit spreads, more aggressive with the ability to manipulate your profit and loss standpoint would be uh, the debit spread side of things. Okay, so debit spreads. Now, somebody with a $1,000 portfolio, they hear this, what's kind of the catch? Why wouldn't somebody just choose that max profit if you could just get 100%, 200%? I mean, there's no, there's no limit. What's kind of the catch there? So the catch is with debit spreads where you have a higher potential max profit, your probability of reaching that uh, is going to be lower. And where you realize max loss with a debit spread is likely gonna be closer to the current stock price than maybe a credit spread would. So okay. credit spread, giving up max profit for space and the ability to be right in a number of different ways. And a debit spread, your risk is much closer to the current stock price, but you're taking that risk in exchange for a higher max profit. So I'm gonna look at the 50 day contracts and I'm okay. gonna look at a short 16-ish, short 16-ish, Delta strangle. My probability of profit is around like 75%. So, which is, which is great. So basically I make money when I sell this position, if Amazon stock price stays between $70 and $105 within the next 50 days, um, that's how I can collect up to about $250 in profit, which is great. I can make, you know, a decent amount of money on this yeah, trade in 50 days, but in order to put on this trade and in order to maintain it, I have to put up $837 in buying power. So this is kind of capital that's going to be held throughout the duration of the trade just to kind of insure it. If I have a $5,000 account, then I could put on this pretty, this would be a pretty high exposure position, um, <laughs> but I might not want to do that. If I want to reduce the amount of capital that I have to put up for this trade, something that I can do is instead of trading a short strangle, I can trade a short iron condor, right? 
So I'm buying some legs to kind of protect each side of this position. I'm defining my risk on either side. And this gives me a probability of profit of 71%. The prob probability of profit goes down a little bit, but it's still better than kind of hoping for a specific outcome, which I can't always bank on. So I still make money if my stock price stays between $70 and $105 after 50 days, except in this case, the size of the position is significantly lower. So in this case, I only have to put up $400 in buying power because my risk is defined. And I can can collect up to a dollar in credit or up to a hundred dollars in credit for 100 shares of underlying. So now I can invest my $400 in this one position and there's an, about an 83% chance that I'm going to collect half of this initial credit, which is $50. So if I'm trying to invest $400 and make $50, this is a way to do it with a little bit more certainty, although there is more risk to that, right? right. Um, even though this is a high probability of profit trade, things can go south, you can take losses. Uh, it's just kind of a part of options trading. But yeah. what's cool about this is that with this 50 day contract, most positions hit half the initial credit and profit at about halfway through the um, expiration cycle. So okay. that would be about 25 days from today or the day that I put the trade on, which is about three and a half weeks from now. So instead of just hoping that Amazon stock price goes up by $10 at some point in the future, I have a little bit more certainty around the time frame for my profit expectations, which it, that's not for everybody. Like I said, there's some additional risks with trading this way, but this might be better for smaller accounts if you want to experiment with options. One last thing to note with smaller accounts and trading spreads is that with spreads, there's really not much of defense associated with them. The, the lack of defensive tactics that you can deploy uh, is definitely real. So I think when it comes to trading spreads, you really uh, need to pick your spots. You need to be uh, trading small, which is what we talk about all the time on the, on the network. And all these things help us avoid variance. They allow us to absorb bad weeks, bad months, uh, where we're not taking huge chunks in terms of risk of the portfolio. We're keeping it small so that even when we run into situations where we have a couple losers in a row, it's not gonna be devastating for us from an overall portfolio standpoint. So to summarize, options make growing a small account unique because you don't have to be exact with where the stock price will be. To get your dollars to stretch further, watch the video on buying power reduction in the description. If you want to be risk averse, trade ETFs and watch the video down in the descriptions about trading credit spreads. If you want to be more aggressive with risk, check out debit spreads, but understand they're harder to defend. Mike's video on debit spreads is in the description.